an extruder assembly. Take an extruder heatsink, hole filament sensor, Prusa ball holder, one magnet 3x3x3mm, spring 3x9, 4mm steel ball, and one M2.5x6 RT screw. Place the hole filament sensor into the similarly shaped pocket in the heatsink. Fix it with M2.5x6 RT screw. Tighten it very carefully. Otherwise, you can track the electronics board. Assemble the Prusa ball holder in this order. First steel ball, then magnet, and then spring. Insert these parts into the Prusa ball holder with the steel ball up. Insert the Prusa ball holder assembly into the heatsink. There is a protrusion on the part, the protrusion must be facing down. Take idler level A, idler level B, two bearings 6932RS, two pins 2.9 by 8.5, one M3 by 6 screw and tubular spacer. Insert the pin into each bearing. Place both bearings with the pins into the idler level A. Close it up with the idler level B and secure it with the M3x6 screw. From the same side, push the tubular spacer into the assembly. Take PG case, one main plate, PG assembly adapter, PG assembly, PG ring, extruder motor, three M3x25 screws, pacer and socket set screw, and lubricant. Place the spacer over the shaft on the extruder motor. Place the heatsink on the extruder motor. Note the orientation of both parts. The motor cable must be facing up and the heatsink cables must be on the right side. Place the main plate on the heatsink. Note the orientation. Use the cutout as a guide. Attach the PG assembly adapter on the PG assembly. Slide the PG ring onto the adapter. Note there is a chamfer on one of the PG ring teeth. This side must be facing down to the PG assembly. Move the PG ring left and right. Stop when the surfaces of the gears are approximately flush with the surface of the PG ring. That means that the surface of the ring and the black part should be on the same level. Maintain the position of the PG assembly and attach it onto the extruder motor shaft. Very gently and freely rotate the whole PG assembly until it drops down so that there is no gap between the assembly and the main plate. Remove the PG assembly adapter. Attach the PG assembly adapter back on the PG assembly again to verify that all parts are properly seated. The PG assembly must be easy to rotate without having to exert much force. Remove the PG adapter. You will no longer need it during the assembly. Make sure that the PG assembly is not sticking out above the PG ring and ensure that the gap between the PG ring and the main plate is minimal. Insert the idler assembly between the PG ring and the extruder motor. There is a cutout for the spacer in the main plate. Line up the idler spacer with the hole in the PG ring. Secure both parts with a socket set screw 3x25, but do not over tighten them. Apply a small amount of Prusa lubricant all around the PG ring and PG assembly teeth. Take the PG case and make sure that the spacer is already inserted in the part. The color of the plastic ring might vary, but the properties are the same. Cover the planetary gear and secure the PG case with the 3 and 3x25 screws. Do not over tighten the screws. Take one idler nut, two idler swivels, two M3x30 screws, two M3x20RT screws, two M3NN nuts, two springs 15x5, and one spacer 6x3.1x8. Push the M3x20RT screw all the way through one of the idler swivels. Slide the spacer onto the screw. Place the second idler swivel from the opposite side of the screw. From the other side, attach the M3NN nut onto the screw. Hold the nut using the universal wrench and tighten the screw just slightly. Insert the idler nut into the idler swivel assembly. Secure both parts together by inserting the M3x20RT screw from the same side like the first screw. Secure the screw with M3NN nut, but do not over tighten the nut. It must be possible to move with the idler swivel on the idler nut. Attach the spring 15x5 on both M3x30 screws. Push the two screws with the springs through the holes in the protrusion on the heatsink. Attach the idler swivel assembly on the screws. And then tighten both screws. 
Stop tightening as soon as the screw tips reach the front face of the plastic. Take two thumb screws, three M3 by 10 screws, one M3 by 4T grub screw, and MTC 90 mm thermistor. On the extruder motor side, insert the MTC thermistor into the hole in the heatsink. Secure it with the M3 by 4T grub screw. Insert two thumb screws into the heatsink. Do not tighten them completely, two turns are enough for now. Place the extruder onto the spacers on the X carriage. There is a cutout in the plastic part. Guide the thermistor cable through this cutout. Align the heatsink holes with the spacers on the X carriage and join both parts together with three M3 by 10 screws. Start with the middle one. Locate the cable channel on the left side of the X carriage. Guide the MTC thermistor through the cable channel in the X carriage up to the low board slot. Now take hot end fan and two M3 by 18 screws. Attach the hot end fan onto the heatsink with two M3 by 18 screws on the left side. Tighten the screw gently but firmly. The cable must be pointing towards the lower left corner. Guide the fan cable between the thumb screws under the cable channel up and connect it to the lower slot on the lock board. Take hot end assembly, locate the hole in the heatsink from the bottom of the extruder and insert the hot end into the heatsink. Guide the hot end cables freely to the left. Push the hot end assembly all the way into the heatsink. There should be approximately a 2mm gap between the heatsink and the brass part of the nozzle. While pushing the hot end assembly in, firmly tighten both thumb screws. Orient the hot end assembly so that the hot symbol on the heater block faces forward. Guide the hot end thermistor through the cable channel in the X carriage and connect it to the lock board. Guide the hot end heater through the cable channel in the X carriage and connect it to the lock board. Take fan door, fan shroud, print fan, one M3 by 30 screw, 2 M3 by 10 screws, 2 M3 by 6 screws, and 2 magnets 20 by 6 by 2. Insert the magnet into the pocket on the inside of the fan door. Guide the cable through the channel in the plastic part. Keep a small gap between both parts. Turn the fan around and attach it to the fan door by using 2 M3 by 6 screws. Take the fan door, take the fan shroud and attach them together. Join both parts together with two M3 by 10 screws. Slowly get the free magnet close to the magnet in the fan door and find out which two sides are attracted to each other. Mark the sides that are attracted to each other with a permanent marker. Locate the hole for the magnet on the left side of the X carriage. Insert the magnet into the hole so that the marked side is facing out of the X carriage. Attach the fan door hinge into its counterpart in the X carriage. Holes in both parts must be aligned. Insert the M3 by 30 screw in the hinge on the fan door. Fully tighten the screw, then loosen it by a quarter turn. The fan door must move freely. Connect the extruder motor cable to the connector on the top side of the lock board. Connect the load cell cable coming from the right of the heatsink to the upper slot on the right side of the low board. Connect the filament sensor cable to the lower slot on the right side of the low board. Connect the print fan cable to the middle slot on the left side of the low board. Close the idler mechanism before proceeding to the next step. Close the extruder idler to the extruder. Close the idler swivel and lock it over the extruder idler assembly. Take low board cover, low board cover right and one M3 by 10 screw. Curve and arrange the cables on the right side of the extruder. Cover the cables with the low board cover right. Secure it with the M3 by 10 screw. Push all cables to the extruder to make more space around them. Slide the low board cover on the extruder. Push it all the way down. In this step, we will finish tensioning the belt. First, slightly release all the screws holding the motor, otherwise the tensioner won't work. Using Boland Allen key, start tightening the screw on the rear side of the accent motor, but after each turn or two, check the tension in the belt. For optimal performance, the belt must have some resistance when pressed with your fingers. Move the extruder to the accent dialer and try the belt tension in the middle of the X axis. Grasp and hold the flat part of the X motor shaft with pliers. 
Move the extruder towards the X motor. Do not use excessive force. If the belt is stretched properly, you should feel a resistance and the extruder won't move at all. The extruder is assembled. If you enjoyed this video, drop a like. If you want to see more, hit that subscribe button. And if you have any words to say, drop a comment down below in the word box. Click on the next video to start LCD assembly.